Hello and welcome back to the Bee Vlog. It's February 14th and a beautiful day outside, about 55 degrees. I'm out checking on all the hives and I'm at the first two hives and there's a flurry of activity out here. The bees are flying and they're looking great. I'm seeing a lot of good activity. They're taking orientation flights. They're taking cleansing flights. If you haven't seen what bee poop looks like, it's a mustard yellow streak and they've been pooping on me and everything else around here. I see pollen coming in. You can tell a lot about a hive just by looking at what's happening on the outside. Seeing pollen comes in tells me that there's a good laying queen in there and that the hive is in good health and that they're expanding and growing. One thing I can't tell though is how much honey is left. Even though they've survived the winter and they're looking great, if they are low on honey, it's going to be a couple months before there's a good nectar supply available for them. So I'm going to be checking the weights today to make sure they've still got good honey stores. Because if they're low, they could still die in the early spring without a good nectar flow. There are a couple ways to check the weight of a hive. You can just grab it from the back and heft it. Doesn't feel too heavy, doesn't feel really light either. This one feels much heavier. Or you can get a scale and measure it. Wow, it only weighs 28 pounds. And this hive weighs 32 pounds. Before I actually feed them, I'll probably just keep an eye on them. Keep a close eye to make sure they don't get too light. A couple days ago I also found a queen yellow jacket on my back patio. So it's time to get the yellow jacket traps out to catch those queens and that prevents them from establishing colonies and then you don't have to worry about the yellow jackets in the fall. These yellow jacket traps are rather expensive. You can either buy them and reuse them multiple times. They have a tractant that you can put back in it or you can bait them with meat like cat food, um, lunch meat, tuna, the yellow jackets are out looking for protein right now, so baiting it with a protein would help attract those queens and catch the queens. You can also make these yourself out of two liter bottles of soda. You just cut the top off, invert it, and that makes a funnel that they can go in but they can't come back out. When hanging these, you want to hang them about two to four feet off the ground and not too high up in a tree. The yellow jackets aren't looking for food up in the trees, they're looking for it down on the grounds because they're looking for insects. Got another hive here that looks like it survived the winter. The little five frame nuke sitting next to it though looks dead, so I'll be taking that apart and taking a look inside. Very small cluster of bees, only about the size of a baseball. Pull it out and show you. Even smaller than a baseball, maybe the size of a golf ball. You can see that they were clustered on a frame of honey, so this is not a case of starvation. They just weren't able to maintain their temperature and they died. But this is perfectly fine to reuse with another hive. It's a good amount of honey here. So I'll just dismantle this, take it home, store it up, save it for swarm. I've got two five frame nukes at this location that are alive. This third one is dead. This was a hive that had a really high mite load at the end of summer last year and suffered a loss from having acute bee paralysis virus and they really lost a lot of their numbers in the early fall I shrunk them down to this little nuke box here, but it looks like they didn't make it through the winter. Taking a look at the entrance of this hive, you can see there's a quite a bit of bee poop all over the outside of it. This might have been a case of dysentery, 
but they seem to be healthy and good. They're bringing in a lot of pollen. There's a lot of activity. So maybe they got over it. Might have just been a case of dysentery from being cooped up for too long over the winter. And as they exit the hive for their cleansing flights, they just couldn't wait until they took flight and they just relieved themselves on the outside. Taking a look at the entrance of the third hive on the other side, there isn't a lot of activity. Makes me wonder what's happening inside. But I do see some activity, a few flights coming in and out. They're mostly using the upper entrance that's tucked in under the lid up there. So I'm going to undo the strap, heft the hives and see how heavy they are. And I'll be dismantling that dead out over there. Oh, I, I, just saw, I just saw pollen go in right there. This hive survived the winter too. This was actually their second winter surviving. There's just not a lot of activity out front right now, but they're in there and they're working. I see pollen coming in from time to time. on the left it survived the winter this is their second winter surviving although it swarmed last year so technically this is the first winter under the reign of the new queen the hive on the right they're dead a few weeks ago I saw this hive robbing out that hive so I know they're dead so I'll be dismantling that nuke today but the hive on the left this is Queen Elizabeth II they look like they're doing great. I see a lot of pollen coming in and a lot of activity. Although they too have that poop staining on the front of the hive. They may have had a case of dysentery and just got over it. While I was dismantling this nuke, I discovered that they were still in the process of robbing it out. I saw a small cluster of bees in there and it looked like, perhaps, there was a small living cluster, but it was actually just robbers. The way to tell the difference is looking at the comb it's really chewed up and you know crummy there's lots of you know literally crumbs of wax left behind that if a hive was living here and eating the honey they'd do it in a very neat and clean way but robbers just take and they leave a mess behind i can show another frame This one still has some robbers on it. They just make a mess of the comb. You can see there's quite a bit of honey on this frame. They just take it as fast as they can and gorge themselves and then take it over next door. Here are the results of this past winter. These are the four hives that died. I went into winter with 11 hives, six of them in 10 frame boxes and five of them in five frame nukes. Three out of the five nukes died, and the other hive was a late swarm that just didn't have enough food stored up. I'll address that one in a minute. But first, let's analyze these results and see what happened. Elizabeth II swarmed last year and successfully raised a new queen. They are doing very well and still look strong. Helen was split last year into four parts. One of the daughter nukes failed to raise a queen, but the other two did okay, or so it seemed. While I was making the splits, I noticed that the mother hive had contracted chronic bee paralysis virus. The following month, I did mite counts. 
and saw that they had a huge mite load. As is my philosophy, I don't treat for mites. Perhaps it would have been best to take mite counts before making splits and only split the ones with low counts. But as it stands, there is a school of thought that making splits and doing brood breaks is a good natural, and I say that with air quotes, natural, treatment for mites. I know this is just one hive, so it's not a good sample size, but it's looking like that may not be a very effective treatment, especially when they had contracted a devastating virus, for which, I should note, there is no treatment available. Jezebel survived her second winter and is still looking strong. I made splits from her last year also, and her two daughters survived and are looking good. Karma and Louise were swarms I got in April and June last year. They survived and look very strong, although they do seem light on food stores, so I'll be watching them closely to make sure they don't starve before spring and our nectar flow starts. They may need a little bit of honey to help them get there. Melissa was a hive that my friend Will removed from a house and gave to me in the early part of June last year. It survived the winter and seems to be doing just fine. Natalia was a late swarm that I collected when our main nectar flow was over. They never seemed to really take off and I hardly saw them working. They were just a lackluster swarm that was going to need a lot of help if they were going to make it. I'm not interested in saving every swarm, just the ones that can prove they have the genetics I want. I gave them a little help at the start to see if it might energize them, but it didn't seem to make any difference. So I decided to see if they could pull through on their own without any help. This is what starvation looks like. Not a speck of honey anywhere in the hive. This hive was not robbed out. I don't see any signs of robbing. That's the edge of where the cluster was. No honey there. You can see most of the cluster is head down in the cells, but again I repeat, as I said last year, head down in the cells is not an indication of starving. That's what they do when they cluster. Starvation means there was no honey on the frame where they were clustering. No honey here, more cluster. No honey on this frame, no cluster either. There's a little bit of mold. That mold is okay. I'll use this comb again with another hive and they'll clean it up. No honey. The hive is completely barren of all honey. Now, if there was honey on the edge, it still doesn't mean that they didn't starve. Like I said, the sign of starvation is no honey on the frames where the cluster is. So there could have been honey way over here on the sides, but no cluster there, and they still would have starved because they wouldn't have been able to get to it. But if they're on a frame with no honey, and that's what happened, they starved. This hive was a late swarm in July last year. I fed them a quart of honey, and I also gave them a frame of honey when I first hived them. But I didn't feed them any more than that as an experiment. Yes, I could have possibly prevented this from happening, but I wanted to see what would happen if I didn't feed a late swarm to see if they could make it, to see if there was enough nectar later in the year. Looks like that's not the case, or at least not last year that wasn't the case. Could I have done anything differently? Yes, one of the main things I could have done differently was when I hived the swarm, what I did was I spaced some of these frames apart from each other, thinking that they might want to draw some comb, which they never did, and it also prevented them from really using some of these outer frames. So one thing I could have done differently with a late swarm is make sure that every frame is packed together, already drawn out, That'll give them time to lay eggs and raise brood and increase their numbers so that they can bring in any nectar that's out there. I also could have fed them more. So, one thing to learn, late swarms in Portland don't get enough nectar to survive the winters. Well, I'm pretty happy with these results. 64% survival rate. That's not what I'd call excellent, but considering three of the losses would have actually been a single loss if I hadn't split it, that's really not bad either. I'm linking in at the end here the video where I made these splits and discovered the chronic bee paralysis virus. You can see what that looks like with the hairless, trembling body, difficulty walking, and inability to fly. Compare that to a regular fuzzy bee that walks with more energy and just looks so much more healthy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.